Hey, what's up everyone? It's Derek with nerdordie.com. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use our source files for any of our source files downloads. So what that means is you can download any of these packs and grab the Adobe After Effects files that you can use to customize your pack even further. Well, in this example, I'm gonna be showing you everything with our Synthwave pack. I do wanna mention that this is actually gonna work with all of our source file packs. So no matter what you're using, it's all gonna be the same process. And we're gonna cover things like changing all the options, rendering everything out, and even some troubleshooting steps that we've noticed when dealing with other customers and our source files so that you can hopefully figure things out and make it as easy as possible. So when we open up the After Effects project, we'll be first greeted with a master comp, which is essentially just shows a range of sources that are available in the package. Be sure to enable the essential graphics, which is found here in the Windows menu. Since I have the Synthwave pack open, I just wanna mention that the options here are gonna be different from the pack that you might be using. The important takeaway here is that basically these options are gonna help you control what's going on in your entire pack. So some of the colors might affect different things throughout every single composition, and it just makes it a lot easier to update your colors, enable effects, and then just render out whatever you need. So you can play around with the options depending on what pack you're using and figure out what does what. And I'll cycle through a couple here just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. So once you're done getting everything to the way that you like it, you can actually go into specific sources very easily. So we'll simply double click it on the master comp and it'll open up that source. And here you can see in better detail how your adjustments will affect the specific source based on what you're choosing in the essential graphics. These fields are linked to each adjustable source in the project file. So if you change them once, it will change them for all sources like I was saying before, saving you time and making everything look consistent for the theme that you're going for. All right, so let's talk about how we can either render all the assets together or individually. So once we've made the adjustments we need to our chosen source, while still on that screen, we can go to File, Export, and hit Add to Media Encoder Queue. It's important you're on the right source when you do this as it ensures you'll be able to export that source and not the master comp by accident. This should load up the Adobe Media Encoder where we select the correct format for your source. If the source usually has transparency in it, we'll wanna make sure that it retains that after it's exported. So under format, click the drop down arrow and let's select WebM. If you don't have the WebM format available, We'll put a link in the description below and show it on screen so that you can download and install it. Once you've done that, then just reload your media encoder. Now that we've added the source to the media encoder queue, click on the preset blue text, and this will pop up the properties for the WebM codec where we can set out the export settings. First of all, most of these sources besides the transition don't require audio, so let's uncheck export audio. Scrolling down, let's hit match source. And what this does is it actually looks at the source properties such as the dimensions and frame rate, and it matches your export to the setting for that. In codec settings, we have VP8 and VP9. While VP9 is the more recent WebM codec, VP8 seems to have much lower CPU footprint from our previous tests and experience. So we're gonna go with that. Scrolling down further, let's check include alpha channel as this source has a transparent background that we can keep. Alpha is just another term for transparency, as is opacity. Let's hit OK, and then under Output File, click the blue text and select where you want this source file to export to. Once that's settled, let's hit the green play button and it should begin encoding. A little tip for speeding up encoding is that the preview window at the bottom of the Adobe Media Encoder actually slows down the rendering process. So be sure to click here and that will hide it. Now that we have with transparency covered, let's talk about sources that don't need transparency. So should you not need it, then you'll have the option to use the H.264 MP4 codec, which will give you an MP4 file with zero alpha. You'll follow the same steps as before, but this time you'll select H.264 as your format, then click the blue text under the preset field. Follow the same procedure of hitting the match source button, and then you can choose to render with maximum depth and render maximum quality and set your bit rate here. The higher the amount, the better quality, but also the larger the file size. There is essentially a cutoff point to where the quality of the video will be perfect and you won't need to render at a higher bit rate. So I recommend starting low and if you feel like it's lacking quality, just bump up the bit rate. The constant bit rate renders at a consistent bit rate throughout, whereas variable bit rate will change the bit rate depending on what it's rendering 
So this depends on how much the encoder deems necessary for that certain segment of the source's timeline. For consistency, I stick with the CBR. Okay, so we have it all covered for what if you wanna render out one source, but let's go ahead and queue up multiple items in case you're ready to just render out your complete overlay. You can go through each source and change your settings and add them all to your render queue one by one, then render all at once rather than one at a time. This is useful if you wanna quickly add through your changes that you're happy with to the Adobe Media Encoder queue, and you'll render it all at once once you're finished tweaking and queuing these sources up. So now that you have everything covered with rendering, we can save your export settings. So you can save your encoding presets if you find a particular custom settings that you're happy with. This can be done on the export settings page. And this is beside the preset field at the top, and you can click the save preset button and name it what you like. Now with all that information covered, you should have everything that you need to render out any of your source files from Nerd or Die. But to just give you a little bit more information, let's talk some troubleshooting in case you run into some problem. Let's say your WebM has rendered without alpha. Be sure to click the alpha channel within the export settings here before hitting okay and beginning to encode. Now, if you're running into the same problem with the MP4 type file where you're not getting alpha, I wanna let you know that the H.264 codec will not render with alpha. So if you want alpha, you'll need to use WebM. And while we're at it, I'll just go ahead and show you a couple of quick and easy things that you can do in After Effects to really enhance everything that we got going on. So if you wanna add a PNG or movie logo onto your starting scene or webcam scene, you can basically just drag it in as a new composition and add it wherever you'd like. If you're trying to replace the text that we have, a quick shortcut for that is actually using Control plus T, and then you'll be able to click the text that you need. Now, remember, you have to be in that specific composition to get to that text. Otherwise, it won't be accessible through something like the master comp. If you're just wanting to change between a handful of ready-made styles we have in the project, you can right-click the timer comp, for example, and reveal the layer source in project. This will bring up where it is within the projects tab, and you'll be able to see the other timer comps, allowing you to easily swap between the different styles. You can actually change the hue on other elements of the pack, such as the stinger composition. So simply open the stinger comp, head down to the adjustment layer here, and you should see the effects controls above, where you can mess around with the hue settings and try to find a color that's perfect for your stream. All right guys, and with all that covered, I hope you know everything you need to make the perfect overlay. If not, make sure to let us know in the comments what else you'd like us to cover in the future, as we're definitely looking to make more videos like this to help you get everything set up the way that you like it. If you're new to the channel and like videos like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video and we'll see you next time.